I really find stabbing something about a hundred times really relaxing. Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T-Pow. And today is day four of Halloween DIY week, where we will be making a tiny felted jack-o-lantern. Last month on my channel, I did a video where I made fall felted decor. And one of the things I made were these tiny felted pumpkins. And I mentioned in that video that I was experimenting with making the pumpkins into jack-o-lanterns. And since I figured out how to do it pretty well, I figured this would be the perfect addition to Halloween DIY week because look how well they pair with the knit ghosties that we made yesterday. It's a match made in heaven. Or a graveyard? A haunted house? It's a match. But without further ado, let's get felting. So in order to do felting, you really only need three things. A felting needle and some type of foam block to press the needle into and wool roving. And you have to make sure that it's 100% wool or the needle won't work. Those are the only three things you need to do any kind of felting. But because we're making ours into a pumpkin, we will also need some embroidery floss that matches the color of our roving and some kind of embroidery needle. Like I mentioned in the intro, I have done this before on my channel and I talked a little bit more about how it all works. So if you're interested in that, you can check out that video. But the most important thing to remember when you're felting is that this needle is very sharp and it also has tiny little barbs on it so you absolutely do not want to poke yourself with it because it's going to hurt going in and it's going to hurt coming out so be careful now because i'm making a classic jack lantern i have some orange wool roving and i'm only going to need about half of this to do it you can find wool roving at most craft stores but i actually bought mine from etsy because there was a seller that sold bundles of colors that went together so this was like an autumn bundle so I will link that below if you're interested. So what I have here is about 12 inches of roving and what I'm going to do is fold it in half and then I'm going to roll this up like a cinnamon bun because the goal here is to get it as close to the shape we want it to be in and then just make sure it stays that way. Now once you roll it up, you're gonna have this loose end. So in order to get the spiral to stay coiled, we're gonna use the felting needle and we're just gonna poke gently at the seam until our spiral doesn't unravel anymore. So as you can see, now I have a spiral that doesn't unravel on its own, but as you can see, there's still a pretty obvious spiral on either end. So now it's time to conceal that. So in order to do this, you'll take your felting needle and you're just going to pull the sides of the spiral in towards the middle of the spiral and press down to cover up the spiral. So as you can see, I pretty much covered up the spiral. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to make it into a pumpkin, which is kind of a squished ball shape. Um, if we were trying to make a perfect felt ball, this would take longer, but we just need it to be somewhat the right shape and then we're going to manipulate it with the embroidery floss. Next, we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Once you're happy with your little almost cylindrical shape we've created, we're going to take a length of embroidery floss and we're going to use that to compress this into a pumpkin shape. So you're gonna take your embroidery floss and thread it up through what would have been the middle of the spiral. And then you're going to take the floss and bring it down around the outside of the pumpkin and then back up through the middle. And you're going to pull it somewhat tight, but not super tight, just tight enough that it starts to create a dimple in your shape. You'll do the same thing around the opposite side of the pumpkin, coming up through the middle every time. And you're gonna do this six times around the pumpkin to create six evenly spaced segments. And don't worry, you don't have to get your protractor out. They don't have to be perfectly even because real pumpkins in nature aren't either. So once you're done, you should have six somewhat even sections in your pumpkin. And then I like to tie off the floss at the top because our stem is going to cover it. And now you have a little felted pumpkin. So next I'm gonna make the stem. So I'm taking off a very small piece of brown roving. Roving goes a long way, so when in doubt, take less than you need, because you can always add more. It's roughly this big, and I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm twisting it just a little bit so that it starts to stay together. 
and then I'm going to hold it over my foam block and press it into a little stem. I'm doing this before I put it on the pumpkin because if I were to do this on the pumpkin, the stem wouldn't stick up straight, it would just adhere to the pumpkin. Once your stem is stiff enough to stand up on its own, you can attach it to the pumpkin. First, I'm trimming off some of the extra roving because it just makes more work for me to attach it to the pumpkin. And then I kind of split the roving in half and set the stem on top of the pumpkin and then I'm going to press the excess roving into the pumpkin to adhere the stem. And now my pumpkin has a stem. The final step to make this a jack-o'-lantern is, you guessed it, to add a face. So for that, we're going to need some black roving, and I mean, like, almost none of it. Like, you will be shocked at how little roving you need to do the face. I'm starting with this much. I don't even know what to call it. I would call it, like, belly button lint amount. Now first I'm kind of rolling it in between my fingers to make it a little bit more condensed. Now the goal here is to make a triangle. So first I'm just poking in the center of the black roving to attach it to the pumpkin and then I'm going to go back and make it more of a triangle. So I'm just pulling in on the sides until it looks more like a triangle shape. So first I'm kind of solidifying the three corners of the triangle and then I'm going to clean it up by felting in the middle. So there's one triangle, and then I'm just going to repeat this step to make two eyes. The last step is to take a little bit more black roving to make a mouth. And just like when you're carving a real jack-o'-lantern, the mouth can be any shape you want. It can be smiling, it can look spooky, it can have the like jagged teeth, whatever you want. It always looks crazy at first, but you can always pull off any pieces you attach, and the more you work at it, the more it will come into the shape you want it to be. And here is my finished felted jack-o'-lantern. I definitely made the eyes smaller because something didn't look right as I was doing it, and I tried to make it like have that toothy look, but it's so tiny you can't tell. But I think it looks happy, so I'm happy with that. These little pumpkins are so easy to make and so quick to whip up. They're really relaxing. I really find stabbing something about a hundred times really relaxing. I don't know why, but it is very cathartic. <laughs> and these are a great companion to my Knit Ghosties, which was yesterday's DIY. So if you want something to display with your little jack-o'-lantern, I highly recommend checking out yesterday's video because how cute are these guys together. But that is all for day four of Halloween DIY week. Tomorrow is the final day and I'm going to be making potion bottles, which is a very witchy DIY for our last day. If you missed any of the previous days, I have them all linked in the description box down below so you can get caught up. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.